بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Before I start I need to make something very clear Because uh, people have a funny way of misunderstanding things So at no point in tonight am I encouraging brothers to do sin So if you understand this from my message today then there's been a miscommunication either from myself or from you but at no point of course are we encouraging sin in any way shape or form so please i have to clarify this because sometimes brothers have a funny way of understanding i'm not sure many years ago i did a video about salah you know and i said pray no matter what's happening in your life pray no matter what's happening so some people took that and wallah and i can do whatever i want as long as i'm praying <laughs> so, bro, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying you can do whatever you want because you're praying. I'm saying regardless of what you're doing, pray. So even if you have haram in your life, that haram shouldn't stop you from the salah. So, so that was the intention. My brothers and sisters, it's, um, we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that created the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human being by design. He's not perfect. Please, you have to understand this. Even for the brothers that are you know, a bit more senior, they've been on deen for a couple of years now, you need to understand who we are by design. The human being by design is a sinner. That's by design. Again, now this doesn't mean that wallah, we can do sin because Allah has created us. No. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, Kulli bani Adam khatta, That all son of Adam, every human being, the good, the bad and the ugly, Kulli bani Adam khatta, Every human being makes mistakes. Every human being sins. Actually, our whole relationship with Allah, what is it? It's a relationship of, Ya Allah, I've done wrong, I've made mistakes, and I'm turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone here is pursuing perfection, you're in Disneyland. It doesn't exist. We can simply work on ourselves and try to better ourselves and try to perfect ourselves. And the idea is to meet, and this is why one of the biggest, the most important pillars of Islam is the door of tawbah, you know, is the door of repentance and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the human being by design, he makes mistakes. Adam alayhi salam, our father, Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to stay away from the tree. And we know from the story, he ate from the tree. So he made mistakes. And the son of Adam will continue to follow after him. And this is the relationship of the human being until the day of judgment. The human being by design, he's forgetful. The human being by design, he's forgetful. There's a very nice hadith, there's a very nice story where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of Adam alayhi salam, in front of Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala displayed to Adam every human being that will be born. So imagine Adam alayhi salam was able to see his offspring, the first to the last, all of them were presented in front of him. Imagine what a sight. So, you know, as he was looking at this beautiful sight, one caught his attention more than the rest. So he asked, he said, Ya Allah, who is this one? So he says to him, this is your son Dawood. And he will be a prophet. So Adam alayhi salam, he asked, he says to him, he says, Oh Allah, and how long will my son Dawood live for? So Allah tells him, 60 years. Adam, knowing he was going to live to a thousand, so he says, Ya Allah, take 40 years from my life and give it to my son Dawood. I want him to live to a hundred. So then Adam, alayhi salam, he comes onto the earth. At 960 years, the angel of death comes to visit him. So Adam says to him, more or less, he says to him, what are you doing here? You're early. He said, no, this is your time. He said, no, Allah said, I'm living to a thousand. So the angel of death says to him, but didn't you give 40 years of your life to your son Dawood? He said, no, I didn't. And he genuinely, and, and actually the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, he said, he said that our father Adam Alaihi Salam, he forgot. And the son of Adam will forget until the day of judgment. So this is by design. So my brothers and sisters, we all sin. We all make mistakes. All of us, wallah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We all sin and we all make mistakes. But sometimes 
the actions we do after the sin can be more dramatic and more detrimental. And sometimes the actions we do after our sin can overshadow the sin that we did initially. And this is what tonight's topic is about. That we need to be conscious of our actions. Sometimes you sin like we've established. I was weak. Something got the better of me. I, I forgot. Whatever the case is. So sometimes we sin. But then what we do after this sin, our actions sometimes after this sin can drown out the sin that you initiated with to begin with. We know that there's major sin and minor sin. Major sin, for example, murder, um, zina, adultery. These things are considered major sins. These major sins you have to perform tawbah. These are not sins that can be forgiven lightly. These are sins that they can be forgiven, but you have to perform the act of tawbah. And then there's minor sins. I don't want to give you examples because then the brothers are, well, brother, it's only a minor, so therefore I can. But minor sins are sins that I don't necessarily have to make tawbah for. There are other things that forgive them. For instance, making wudu, forgive sins. Doing a good deed wipes away a sin. Walking to the masjid, every step you take to the masjid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes away a sin and gives you a hasana and he elevates your ranks. So there are sins that you do that are forgiven without you specifically having to ask for it. But sometimes insisting on a minor sin, insisting on a minor sin can elevate this sin and make it a, a mage. Although initially it was minor, but you being consistent on it, yani I keep repeatedly doing it again and again and again without making tawbah for it, this now elevates it from a minor sin to a major sin. My brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility to not only protect ourselves from performing sin, but more importantly, we have to protect our society and our community and our environment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that those people that wish that zina should be made abundant amongst the people, for them is a severe punishment in dunya and in akhirah. There's a difference between, again, I'm not promoting sin, but there's a difference between the person who did his haram behind closed doors and was ashamed and he was embarrassed of his sin, there's a massive difference between this person and the people that promote their sins outside publicly like there's nothing wrong with it. These people are on another level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah makes it clear that those people that wish that zina should be made abundant, and yani people are speaking about it, sharing it, openly doing, Allah says for them is a severe punishment in dunya and in akhirah. One of the names of the day of judgment, my brothers, is the day of exposure. And that day is not an easy day. That day is not an easy day. The Prophet wasallam, and really my whole talk tonight is based on this one hadith. So please take this hadith home with you. The Prophet wasallam, he says, all of my ummah, will be forgiven. They will be shown mercy. Please, very important hadith. Make sure you take this home. All of my ummah will be forgiven and it will be shown mercy. Except. Except the ones that did their haram openly, publicly. For these people, irrespective of whether it was a major or a minor sin, irrespective, they did the haram openly in front of people with no shame, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for them there is no rahmah. And then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the authentic hadith, he continues on to give an example. He said, he is like the one who did his haram in the cover of night 
And Allah provided a blanket over the haram that he did. Yani Allah covered it for him. Then in the morning he wakes up and he tears up the blanket that Allah put over his sin. And he starts to tell the people, Wallah, I did this and I did this and I did this. For this person, there is no rahmah. And we need to understand, my brothers, again, we've established, we all do wrong. We all make mistakes. We, we know this. But the person that does his sin openly, publicly, with no shame, he tears up the cover that Allah provided for him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, for this person, there is no rahmah for him on the Day of Judgment. So let me give you an example, because this is very important. Wallah, I'm not picking on the sin, so please, again, I'm not picking on the sin, I'm just using this particular sin as an example. Smoking, for instance. I understand many brothers, they started smoking when they were young. It's a bad habit. Wallah, sincerely from my heart. I ask Allah to make it easy for all brothers and sisters that smoke, to make it easy for them. I understand it's a very disgusting habit. It's a very expensive one. Anyway, you smoking is a sin. Some of the ulama say that it's a minor sin. It's not something. You smoking is a minor sin. But you smoking outside, publicly, in front of people, without any shame whatsoever, that's you doing that action publicly far supersedes the cigarette itself initially. What you're doing publicly overshadowed the cigarette in itself and this has become major in the eyes of Allah. Because we have a responsibility of protecting our community and the society in which we live in. Does that make sense? So I smoke. Yeah, um, whatever it is, cigarettes, uh, shisha, argila, whatever it is. You should be having that cigarette in private, in secret, where no one is there. You're not there with friends. You're supposed to be having that cigarette and you should be, you're supposed to be feeling ashamed about it. Maybe you have an addiction, brother, well, I'm trying to get rid of it, it's difficult. But when I start smoking my cigarette with friends, and we're giggling and we're laughing and other people can see us and I'm smoking in front of my kids. This is far worse than smoking. And these are the actions that when Audhu Billah will lead us to have no rahmah from Allah. And Wallah, my brothers, we don't want this. So if you have habits, we all do. We all have things that we're not proud of. We all have things that we're ashamed of. But you have to be cautious that I do what I do secretly behind closed doors and that I don't openly expose this. Because in openly exposing it, guess what? It becomes worse than the sin itself. Music, for instance. Music is clearly haram. Listening to music is haram. And by Allah, I understand, I always say this, the hardest thing for me from Jahiliya was music. That was the... That was the hardest thing. I could give up anything and everything. Music was the hardest thing for me. So I understand, wallahi, like I understand brothers and sisters that have this addiction to music. It's... But when I'm driving in my car and I have my windows down and I have the music out so that others can hear, this has become worse than listening to music itself. So if you find yourself in a situation where, Wallah, you know what, I can't, I have to listen, then turn it down. Put it so that only you can hear. Put the windows up. Do whatever you can to minimize the exposure of other people seeing you. And this is called having adab with Allah. This is having adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For instance, the sister that doesn't wear hijab. The sister that doesn't wear hijab. Wallah, tonight I'm not here to pick on anyone's sins. Her not wearing hijab, or even worse, the one that wears hijab and now, mashallah, has become the common trend. Yeah? 
Skins. Have you, have, you, have you seen this amazing trend? So now sisters wear skins, like full tights, full. They actually caught skins so that there's no confusion. They actually caught skins, right? Full figure. You can see her whole body, but she has the hijab on, right? So whether it's this, this sister that's dressed like this while she's working out in her gym or she's working out in the garage, no one can see her. She's not falling in sin. But as soon as she steps out into the public spectrum and now other male eyes and other people, it's not even male eyes, even showing herself to other women in such a manner and allowing this culture, you see this 10 years ago would have never ever happened in our streets. You have to understand how does shaitan work? How are things introduced into communities? How? 10 years ago, 20, this would have never happened in our streets. It took one person, two, wallah brother, what do you want me to do? There isn't enough da'wah to back, and then you can, now it's become the norm. But it's not norm. It's still haram. Even if every person on earth was to start doing it, and everyone was to show you that, wallah brother, there's nothing wrong with it, everyone does it. Haram is haram and nothing can change that until the day, nothing can change that. And we like to find comfort in fight. We, we like to come find comfort in putting ourselves with people that have similar habits and similar qualities and similar, right? So that therefore I don't feel like I'm out of place. So you find yourself, smokers automatically find other smokers. As soon as there's a gathering or something, subhanAllah, it's like they're like magnets. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, I found the people. Why? Because no one, no one likes to put himself in an environment where he's the odd one out. So this sister, when she openly walks outside and places herself and walks around in a manner of, Wallah brother, yeah, I'm doing it and so what? This has become worse than the sin that she's doing initially. And you need to understand, my brothers, this is a massive hadith. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says that on the day of judgment, they will be shown no... This is the Prophet of Rahmah. This whole deen is based on Rahmah. Every chapter in the Quran with the exception of Surah At-Tawbah starts with what? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most forgiving. This whole deen is based on Rahmah because the human being sins and Allah knows this. But when it came to people openly doing their sins with no shame, because this is arrogance now. Yeah, brother, I know it's wrong and so what and who are you and only God can judge me and brother. This attitude with this is what destroys our community. This is what destroys a society. And brothers now, one of the conditions of Tawbah, one of the conditions of Tawbah is to do what? Is to regret the sin that you did. That's one of the conditions of Tawbah, is to regret the action that you did. You find yourself now, and I find this many times, this has happened in front of me multiple times. We sit in a gathering and we actually compete with each other on who had a worse jahiliya. Is that all you did? Like, bro, what are you talking about? Wallah, you don't understand. Do you remember when we did this and do you remember? But it's lost in the wallah, wallah, wallah. It's just the boys who are hanging out. We're having a laugh and we're speaking about the old days. This is haram, my brothers. And this breaks the condition of tawbah. You should be finding no pride. You should be finding absolutely nothing to be proud about when it comes to the muharramat. So boys sitting down, having a laugh, having a giggle of who was, you know, who did more haram than the other and, you know, who can outdo the other person with his stupidity. This isn't deen. We're supposed to be ashamed of our past. We're supposed to be embarrassed. This is not something that we're supposed to be boasting, you know, in front of one another. And the brother is that, but, and... This is how shaitan gets in there. Look, brother, this is a chance for me to boast, but alhamdulillah, this was in the past. So I'm not saying, no, brother, this is all wrong. 
We're supposed to be protecting our society. We're supposed to be protecting the community. We don't encourage haram in any way, shape or form. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the person, that the person that advocates good, the person that spreads good, then whatever good comes from that goodness, he gets a portion of it. Yani if I was to share a hadith, if I was to give some da'wah, and that person was to implement this hadith, or it was to implement, right, and he did good in his life, then I would get, I would get the same reward as that person did. If I taught someone how to pray, or, or I encouraged someone to pray, then any, every time that person prays after that, I get the reward for that salah. But the opposite is true too. If I encourage haram, if I encourage sin, and people start doing this sin, then I get the same sin as well. My brothers and sisters, you, wallah, Allah, yes, well, yani, I really don't know how to say this. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. We're not a joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold every single one of us accountable. What you share on your phone, what you share on WhatsApp, what you share on Facebook, you may, wallah, for you, it's simply forward. But you're going to be held responsible for every single thing you share. Everything you look at, we're going to be held responsible for it. It's one thing that I looked at haram, wallah. But if I shared this haram, if I shared this, this fahsha and this, you know, if I share this and I make this abundant, then I'm going to fall into that sin. Every person that watches it, you get that sin. So we need to take matters very seriously. Because now people, we like to always say, well, brother, you know, the area has gone, the area is fried, brother, everyone is cooked, brother, this, that. Even this language needs to stop. The one who says the people are destroyed, he is destroyed. We need to stop promoting that, Wallah brother, you know what? There's no point. Everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is fried. Everyone else is. So therefore, it's almost like it's, you know what? It's okay. No, brother, it's not okay. And as Muslims, we need to have rahmah and we need to always have good thoughts and we need to have hope in Allah and in our community. Yes, do people do zina? Yeah, we know people do zina in the community. But does that mean everyone does zina? No. Even speaking in such a tone, speaking in such a language of Wallah, you know what, making the people feel that Wallah, brother, you know what, everyone else is doing as level. It's incorrect. We have to promote good. We have to protect our society. We have to, even if I myself, and people think about, brother, isn't that hypocritical? No, it's not. The scholars give examples that I could be doing one haram. I could be doing one particular haram. And if there's an opportunity to do al-amr bil ma'roof wa nahi al munkar on something else, then I still have to do it even while I'm doing the haram itself. It's ajib, eh? Like it's, it's, it goes against the logical concept we have in the area. And oh, wallah, brother, that, that, you know, that, that's very hypocritical. That the guy's walking around with his girlfriend and he's giving advice to a person to, to pray. Now, actually, this has nothing to do with that. That's a sin. He's definitely going to be questioned about it by Allah. But if there's a possibility, if there's an option for you to promote good, to encourage good, then you still have to do that. The day of judgment, my brothers, is the day of exposure. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? It's the day of fadiha, bro. Fadiha, fadiha. Every single one of us is going to be exposed. Not just physically exposed. The Prophet says in the authentic hadith, you'll be naked, barefooted, uncircumcised. Every human being will stand in front of Allah. Everyone. And what you did in this life will be exposed for all to see. The haram you did in private, the haram you did when your mother and your father were watching, the haram you did behind your wife's back and behind your husband's back and, and, and. Yeah, maybe in dunya you're going to get away with it. But on the day of judgment, every single person will see. Make no mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, an atom's weight of good, you're going to see. And an atom's weight of sin, 
You're going to see it, but every single person is going to see exposure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to expose every single person. Prophets were scared, my brothers. Prophets were petrified. Prophets, anbiya, anbiya. Men that were free from sin. They were scared and petrified of that day. Who wants that fdiha? Who wants that fdiha? Who? Brother, wallah, just have your mother walk in on you watching something haram. See how embarrassing it is. It's humiliating. My brothers, imagine when you're in front of Allah. You know your mother, as embarrassing as that is, she'll probably cover it for you. Because you're her son, you're her daughter. Wallah, she'll... Imagine in front of Allah, my brothers. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people from, from, they're so shy on that day, their faces will melt. The skin on their faces will melt off their face. So what does he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the authentic hadith? He said, the one, that, the one that covered the sins of his brother in dunya, Allah will cover their sins on the day of judgment. The one that covered the sins of his brother, the one that covered the sins of her sister, the ones that used to make sutra on the muharramat that people do, Allah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hide what? He will hide their sins on the Day of Judgment. Can you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants a society where people cover for each other? Now this does not mean, because sometimes this misconception happens. This does not mean that we don't do Al-Amr bil maruf wa nahi al munkar yani When someone does haram, we can say to that person, brother, this is haram, sister, this is haram. Right? This does not mean that we don't try and stop that. No. What this is speaking about is, I'm sitting there with my mate, I'm telling him, brother, wallah, you're not going to believe, you know, fulan, yeah, last night I saw him, he was doing this, that and the other. Having a laugh about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves sutra, my brothers. Allah loves that things are covered. Yeah, we understand people have flaws. Yes, we understand that people make mistakes. But exposing those mistakes, making those mistakes public, Laughing about these mistakes, competing about our jihl, competing about this is far worse. And we're going to be held responsible for it. And if you think now that sitting, oh, Allah, brother, what's, trust me, it's a massive deal on the day of judgment. Allah loves sutra. Allah loves that when something, cover it. Rasulullah is saying, Allah throws a blanket. Allah throws a blanket over your sins and then you expose yourself in the morning. Wallah brother, you don't understand last night. Ah, 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 wallah, we did this and we did that and we went here and we went there. You're tearing up the blanket that Allah gave you. So we have to be very conscious. Wallah, my brothers. Every single person, he plays a role in protecting Protecting this area, protecting our streets. Don't speak about haram like it's common. Although you know, like you, like you believe, well, brother, everyone does it. But still, you have to protect the street. We never speak about haram in a way where, well, we take the edge off it. We never speak about haram in a way where, <clears throat> where you know, it's somewhat acceptable. Never. We have to protect. Allah loves sutra. Allah loves that you cover your sins. You cover your mistakes. Why? Because so long as it's covered, Allah will speak to you about that privately. And if you're worried about yourself, then protect others. Cover the mistakes of others. You know, my brothers, there's a quality and I'm going to wrap up with this, you know. There's a quality that Allah and His Prophet love. 
And unfortunately, it's becoming rarer and rarer to see. And I'll openly admit today, I don't, wallahi, I don't say this proudly. Wallah, I say this with embarrassment. I feel like I don't possess this quality. Allah loves Haya. And Haya is a word, there's actually no English translation for it. There's not a word in the English dictionary, there's not a single word that can translate the word Haya and give it its rights. And that speaks volumes. When a language, whether it's English or any other language, when a language or a culture don't have words for concepts like honesty, honor, loyalty, that speaks volumes about those people and it speaks volumes about that language. And it's a quality, the Prophet says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that hayat, yani to have haya is from Iman. And we live in societies today where actually it's the opposite. When someone is caught, uh, so haya, the word haya, haya is derived from the word hay. Look how amazing this is in Arabic. In English, again, like I said, there's no single word, but there's a collaboration of words. So to have haya, it means To be modest, bashfulness, humbleness also. Yeah, shyness, but I don't like shyness because sometimes shyness can be interpreted as weakness. And to have haya doesn't mean you're weak. <laughs> and sometimes brothers, and that's the, like now, this is the society that we have. Today when you find a brother who doesn't talk much, <laughs> you know, when I speak to Lebanese parents, I say to them, you know, what do you want for your daughter? <laughs> so we have this for Lebanese brothers. I know, sorry, for those that, that don't speak Lebanese. Speaking Lebanese is different to Arabic, huh? But we have this culture now where it's like we don't want a man who doesn't put himself out there, who's not sort of outspoken, he's loud. We interpret this, this is the Sikh society, we interpret this to be like strength, you know, that I'm not a walkover, I'm not a pushover. That if I have something to say, that therefore I'll say it, you know, that, you know, I'm not going to be the quiet one in the crowd. But actually Allah and His Prophet, they love the quality of what? The Prophet says it's from Iman It's from Iman. The Prophet when he was described, when the Sahaba described him, who knows what example they, they gave about his demeanor. He was? Yeah, again, I don't like the word shy because, but yes, he was, but there's one specific example. Does anyone know it? Allahu Akbar. He was like a... The Sahaba described Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They described his demeanor. They said he was like a virgin behind the veil. He was like a... A virgin behind the veil. And like I said, I don't like shyness because people interpret this as weakness. The same men who said he was like a virgin behind the veil, they said when he was on the battlefield, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we used to run behind his back to get a moment to breathe while he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, continued fighting. That's the strength he showed on the battlefield. But off the battlefield, they said he was like a virgin behind the veil. Of all of the companions, my ma uh, of all of the companions, who was the master of Hayat? Which companion shines? Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Again, this is from Iman. 
to be humble, to be subtle. To, this doesn't mean you're weak. This doesn't mean you don't say what you need to say and that you don't speak the truth when you need to. No, but his demeanor. And look at the society that we live in today. It's the exact opposite. Allah wants sutra. Allah wants you to cover. My brothers and my, you know, especially my sisters, if, if, and I'm going to explain, if the men were like this, what were their women? Again, I'm not here to say halal haram because brother, I don't want to get knocked outside on Holden Street. Wallah, the sisters will jump and start shanking me in the neck. Today, she wants to take the stage. She wants to take the platform. She wants to speak on her husband's behalf. Wallahi, most marriages, when I come to, you know, sort of try and mediate, yeah, you go to the brother's father or you go to the sister's father, brother, he says to me in front, he gets me, well, brother, I don't have a say, you need to talk to her mother. In front of, like, no, brother, I'm akis alayhi, brother, I don't have a say. I don't have a say, you need to talk to the mother. She runs the show here. Yeah, and, 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 and she'll happily tell you too. And me, I'm here. You need to talk to me, brother. La ilaha illallah. You know? So we now, and, and we, we, like we see this as strength. That wallah, brother, Allahumma barik, you know that. Look, look. This is actually the exact opposite. So we said Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he shined in this. Uthman, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Wallah, you will never understand the weight of this hadith. We will never understand the weight of this hadith. Even fathers that have daughters. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I had 100 daughters, I will marry them one after the other to Uthman. Wallah, how? Imagine a prophet of Allah is saying, if I had 100 daughters, I would marry them one after the other to Uthman. Why? Because he was loud. Once Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, I was sitting with my husband sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he was sitting in a manner where a portion of his leg was exposed. I'm not sure exactly. So I'm not saying his aura was showing. I'm not sure. But she said a portion of his leg was showing. He was sitting, it was only him and his wife sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And she said, the door knocked. She said, when I went to the door, I found that it was my father, Abu Bakr. So I said to my husband, that our Prophet of Allah, it's my father, Abu Bakr. So he said to her, tell him to come in, Aisha. But he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he remained as he was seated. So Abu Bakr walked in and he sat in the gathering. Aisha then goes on to say, she said, sometime later, the door knocked. When I answered the door, it was Umar bin al-Khattab. So I told my husband, it's Umar bin al-Khattab. So he said, tell him to come in, Aisha. She said, and he remained as he was. She said, sometime later, the door knocked for the third time. She said, when I answered the door, I found that it was Uthman. So I told my husband that our Prophet of Allah, it's Uthman. She said, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he stood up and fixed his clothing and his posture. Then instructed her, tell him to come in. When they left, after the gathering took place, when they left, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, anha, she says to the Prophet of Allah, she says to my Prophet of Allah, this was strange. When my father walked in, you remained as you were. 
When Umar walked in, you remained as you were. Why when Uthman walked in, you stood up and you fixed your posture and your clothing? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to her, Aisha, should I not be shy of a man whom even the angels are shy of? And you think today, my brother and my sister, that by you recording for a silly laugh and for things to be shared, you think this makes you what, good, makes you famous? Allah loves sutra. There are narrations of Uthman and narrations of Ali bin Abi Talib. I'm not sure of their authenticity, but there are narrations of them that say they never looked at their private parts ever. This is haya, modesty, conduct. Today we walk around naked in the house. Oh, brother, I'm in the house. Yeah, but there's angels in that house, brother. Yeah, but brother is a haram. And then everyone tries to, you know, technicality. Wallahi, my brothers, Halal and haram, forgive me, I don't know how to say this, you know. How do I say this in being very respectful? Halal and haram, without taking anything, that's kindergarten language. That's kindergarten language. For those people that are pursuing a relationship with Allah, they don't talk halal haram. The awliya of Allah, those that are friends with... My brothers, when the Prophet made 100 istighfars a day, what was he making istighfar about, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Tell me, wasn't he free from sin? Wasn't Rasulullah, wasn't he free from sin? Why was he making istighfar 100 times a day? Why? Because for those people, yes, but for those people that are close to Allah, him reading one hour of Quran, he's embarrassed from that. They don't talk halal haram anymore. They talk, what halal can I leave out of getting closer to Allah? They have a private and intimate relationship with Allah. So yes, my brother, you have a sin, you make a mistake. Wallah, we've already established, I've said it 10 times. We all make mistakes, Akhi. Wallahi, we're not here to crucify anyone. But that arrogance of doing your sin in front of people, you're tarnishing your private relationship with Allah. When you speak about your haram in public and you're having a laugh and a giggle, Allah provided you with a blanket. Allah provided you with sutra and we rip it up. So we need to understand who every one of us here has a private relationship with Allah. I believe it was Uthman never touched his private part with his right hand ever. Halal haram. Brother, wallah, it's not the point anymore. When he was asked why, he said, I shake the Prophet's hand with my right, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar, like where, where, like where are these people's thoughts? Where? When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would sleep with his wives, of course, yani, this is a part of life. And there's no, you know, when it, when it comes to this, of course in deen, we don't shy away. From, but when you look at the demeanor, how they did things, Wallah, our fitrah has been destroyed. The lights were off. Sunnah, to have the lights off. Covers, bedsheets, covers. <laughs> Wallah, you say this to some people today. Wallah, it's actually comical. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I want to see, I want to watch. Again, halal, huh? Wallah, again, I'm not. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's not. I'm not saying that, Wallah, brother, this isn't. Like again, this is your right. But to show you how far off. So this having haya, this having this 
this shyness, this bashfulness, this, this being embarrassed of your sins, being embarrassed of being seen out in the public. This is a quality of deen. So the next time, and wallah, my brothers, you know, actually, if you were to try this, see the psychological impact it has. See the effects it has on your relationship with Allah. And for instance, if you're a brother that smokes or a sister that smokes, yeah? Imagine now the next cigarette that you had to have, no one, like no one is allowed to be there. See how difficult it becomes. But this can also help and assist you in what? In quitting. When we isolate ourselves. When we show Allah that, Ya Allah, look, I know I can't stop this sin, but I'm doing my best that I'm not doing this in front of anyone. Wallah, my brothers, you will never find anyone that was punished because of something he did privately in his... Show me, show me one, one incident in Sirah. I'm sure there's maybe one or two, but very rarely do you find in the Sirah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man that was caught in the privacy of his own room doing a haram and that was brought out to the open and never, never or very rarely because I'm not 100% sure, but very rarely. But the person who did his haram outside in the open, you'll find that what? He would have an open punishment to teach the people that this is not acceptable within Islam. So my brothers and sisters, to wrap up, we need to be very conscious with what we do. Don't be that person that promotes haram. Don't be that person that's proud of his sins, but wallah brother, I did it in the past. And speak about it in a manner where, you know, we're having a laugh. Promoting haram within the society, spreading it on our phones. Wallah, my brothers, you have no idea. We have no idea what we're going to be held accountable because of this thing. Yeah, man. How many times, I don't know if you guys, how many times I've had someone send me a hadith and then three minutes later, oh, sorry, brothers, that was a, that was a weak hadith, that was a fake hadith, and well, just share. Share openly, publicly. And this attitude, you know, like, well, uh, this arrogance. Allah loves sutra. Allah loves it. My brothers, like, you know what that means? Allah loves sutra. Do you know what that means? Allah loves that you cover. It doesn't say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, like, he could have said that Allah loves that you'd never seen. He could have said that. But not actually what he said, Allah loves sutra. That you cover. That you're embarrassed of your sin. And if you're not embarrassed, then at least act like you're embarrassed. Don't underestimate that. At least act like you're embarrassed. Wallah, this is better for your deen. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to preserve ourselves and to preserve this community. Nas'allallah azza wa jalla niyakhfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Allahiyai minhum wal amwat. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.